Well, hello, welcome to my office. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to use a mask on an image to cut through one image and put it on the other. Um, this is kind of a basic skill that you're going to need for a lot of edits you do uh, throughout the year. Um, so I'm going to just show you this first one here um, using a picture of me uh, that you can see on the screen right now um, and my wife Molly. And we're going to get rid of this background, which is a beach background, and insert this Portland waterfront background image. Now, of course, you might already notice uh, just from the get-go that this is really more of a probably after, you know, after sunset image. Um, it could be an early morning image, but probably an after sunset image. And this is very much a midday beach scene. So these don't match up entirely, but they should work just fine for our purposes. Okay. So once you have two pictures selected, two that are going to work together, um, what you want to do is choose the one that's going to go on the background and you can either bring the foreground picture and copy it over to the background or bring the background and copy it over to the foreground. For our purposes, we're going to take the background here, the waterfront and move it to the foreground. So what we'll do first is click control A and that will select everything on this image. We'll then click control C on the keyboard and go over to the picture of me and Molly and use control V to paste that. Now you'll notice over here on the layers, that background image has now become a new layer. Right away, what I always want to do is rename that. So I'm going to call that Portland Skyline. Of course, you could just name it Skyline. That probably probably be enough, but why not? All right. Um, then what we're going to do is do use control T I'll zoom out here just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use control T and that will allow me to resize this. If I hold down shift as I click that left handed selection selector, it will maintain the proportions and that way it just won't look too stretched or strange. Obviously this picture of me and Molly is a little bit, uh, small compared to the picture of the skyline, but that's okay because it'll allow for the skyline to look a little bit better. We will push enter to confirm that change. Then we can zoom in on um, the background and kind of see what's going on. We can also toggle over here to the left and the right using these eyeballs. So there's the original picture. Um, or I could use this opacity bar here and I can kind of see how we're placed on the skyline. Now, in a lot of cases, that's going to really matter, but because this is a skyline and we're just putting it in the background, I'm not super worried about it. So we're going to leave that at a hundred percent. Okay. To cut through, we're going to need to use our brush tool, which is over here or keyboard shortcut B. And then we're also going to need to be aware of our chips, our color chips, and we're going to use down here, a layer mask. So with the layer selected that you're going to put the layer mask on, you're going to click it, the layer mask that is, there we go. I had to move my face and notice it gives us this white panel. Now what that's doing is essentially letting you see through this layer. So see through this picture to the picture below. And to do that, we're going to use up the black brush and paint on this white background to, to kind of see through. So now we're going to choose B for brush over here. And oftentimes your opacity, will, your opacity will be a hundred percent right away. And if it is, it's going to cut through completely right away. Okay. So it's a pretty quick cut through. You can do that and you can have a really quick cut through. And that's sometimes good for just um, getting rid of a lot of the image very quickly. But eventually what you're probably going to want to do, whoa, aggressive zoom. What you're probably going to want to do is then go back to the choice you've made here on opacity, zoom in and start to select areas. Cause obviously right now this isn't looking very realistic. So notice right here, it shows the area that I've colored black. If I make a mistake, let's say I go like this on accident and I'm like, oh no, I lost the buildings. Then what I can do is rotate those two chips back to white and I can quickly fix those buildings. And notice that covers up the black marking over here. 
So now what I want to do to get my ear and to get those things is I want to zoom in using Z or this little tool down here. Go back to black, the brush, switch my chip over, and then I'm going to lower this opacity because I just want to gradually bring it in. To make my cursor smaller, I can use the bracket keys, or I could just go up here and rotate the size. And then I just want to color in my face. If you notice the colors changing, I think it's just the processor on my computer. It's acting a fool. And then I can slowly bring in the details that I want to bring in and avoid bringing in some of those other details that I might not want right now. For instance, I can now get rid of this beach back here by going back to white, using my brush, and coloring in the skyline. Now hair is tricky, but you can just do your best. And having a lower opacity allows you to kind of keep some of the hair and also bring in the background. We'll zoom out. So that's the basics basis of a map. Excuse me. Yeah, um, a mask, not a map. That is the basis of a mask. Um, we'll stop there. Uh, we'll talk about selection, how you'd make that more crisp, how you'd uh, bring out details, do all that kind of stuff. We'll do that much later. But for now, that's the real basic step there.